there's challenges, as you say, once there's in there's challenges from elections, there's challenges from inflation, there's challenges from all sorts of things, from energy supply. I think we've lived through a very turbulent year, year 2022, but as you have seen, we as Wiener Burger have pretty, done pretty well. We have a record uh, uh, result um, after the third quarter. We have given an upgraded guidance to 950, 970 EBITDA million. So a strong performance this year. And I do see that the markets, obviously, when you look at the, our end markets, new residential housing is uh, declining, slightly declining, has started in Eastern Europe, by the way, and is now progressing uh, towards also Western Europe and the United States. I would say that we see about 10% uh, sort of decrease on the group level when we talk about end markets. But you see also that Wienerberger is doing pretty well with our new solutions and new products in these markets. On the renovation side, pretty stable throughout all of our markets and infrastructure. You know, we are now not only a brick maker, but a leading provider of water solutions around Europe and North America. And here we see also a slight decline in activity on our end markets, about 5%. But again, I think the strong portfolio, focus on innovation and cost control has contributed largely to this uh, very strong set of results. So I, I note your caution and the challenge is, is Europe going into a recession? Well, I think technically speaking, when we look at what the definition of a recession is uh, with two consecutive quarters of declines, yes, the answer is yes. However, I would say, you know, we shouldn't be that pessimistic because obviously we have seen uh, a strong performance in the uh, building sector over uh, the COVID period and after the COVID period. It's a technical correction. The only thing which is actually of concern and which we have to look very closely are the interest rates because we see pretty high interest rates in Eastern Europe, above 8 and 9%, uh, increasing in North America, obviously, and also now in the EU, in the, in the core sector, and obviously also in the UK. So this is a major concern. Otherwise, on the pent-up demand, the demand in the market itself, I don't see a major issue. Jaime, can we just centre on the energy question for a second here? Because I, I think back in March, you were quoted as describing EU policies on energy as chaotic. We still don't have the so-called price cap on gas that's been talked about endlessly at EU-level meetings. Um, it, it seems that for you, a, a, a company that requires energy to, to complete and finish its products, it's very important that you secure sources through the rest of next year. How is that going? And do you still feel that the EU energy policy approach is chaotic? Well, I, chaotic, I think it's, a, it's an approach that takes time. Politically speaking, you know that a lot of the countries have come, come together and the ministers and the head of states have to find solutions. However, I do not see yet a common real energy policy. Energy policy for me consists first of energy resources. And here we need to move away from fossil resources in Europe to more sustainable ones. That's the first step. The second one is the infrastructure in Europe. Obviously, you need to build also the necessary infrastructure. And this is a European approach that needs to happen, especially for industry. And you're absolutely right when you say we need a long-term perspective. We invest for 20, 30 years. So this is something where we still lack a common European policy. However, when we talk about Wienerberg, and it, as you have correctly pointed out, we have 240 sites. And so we have to operate uh, in, a, in a very unstable environment. Again, we have made all mitigation plans for every and any site in our company so that we ensure the energy supply to those sites and that we can run them safely through also 2023.